this particular cruise ship is different. The passengers were already in Singapore. They had arrived in Singapore. And then they embarked on a cruise from Singapore with the intention to come back to Singapore. I don't think it would be right for us to reject the ship if they were to come back to Singapore. Because they had embarked from Singapore. The tourists were already on, in Singapore. And they are they left with the intention to come back to Singapore. So that's why we agreed to accept them uh, and we took extra precautions as we have done for all cruise ships as well. Meaning to say, for any traveller with uh, exposure to the affected regions, we check them thoroughly medically by a doctor and then we make sure that uh, they fly straight up from the cruise ship to the airport immediately and in fact, they will all be leaving tonight. In fact, the majority of the passengers on the cruise ship will be leaving tonight. And virtually all of them will have left in one or two days. Right, so we are able with all these precautions to ensure that uh, we keep the situation safe. Uh, the broader question is, what should we do with cruise ships going forward? And there, I think we have to look at it from a broader context of looking at the overall risk situation and also the appropriate measures that we want to put in place. Uh, because if you think about this, uh, what are we doing for tourists? For tourists who are coming from affected regions, we already have uh, uh, travel restrictions. But we have not stopped tourists from coming in from anywhere else in the world. They can come to Singapore. They can take part in a whole range of activities in Singapore. They can go on cruises from Singapore and come back. They can travel from Singapore to Batam, Bintan and the neighbouring countries and come back. We have not restricted um, tourists from doing that. We have not restricted Singaporeans from doing these activities either. Incidentally, there are Singaporeans on that cruise ship too. So actually, we should look at it from the broader perspective in terms of what kinds of measures we want to put in place to manage risk, regardless of whether it's a tourist or a Singaporean. What are, what, what are the kinds of activities, what are the kinds of social distancing measures that are appropriate for Singapore itself as the situation evolves? And that's why I mentioned earlier, we have a range of social distancing measures that we are continuing to study, and they apply whether to events, to uh, gatherings, to cruises, and we will look at what's appropriate as the situation evolves and whether or not we should apply tighter measures along the way.